mean really though. Feel me though. All eyes on me, still can't see me though. Feel me though. I mean really though. Still talking about what they don't even know. Feel me though. I mean really though. Feel me though. I mean really though. Feel me though. Who up the street? This is welcome to the Feel Me Though podcast with your host. Naughty Dread. I got a legend. One and only. Street Doc. This is not a test. Offense defense. Offense defense. <laughs> Feel me though. Feel me though. Uh, street. <laughs> I've been hearing your stories for over 20 years. I, 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 I've been, I, I've been intrigued every time. You know what I'm saying? And I know most of the Port City know know your story, know know about you, know the legend of the street. And we, we trying to let the world know. Well, good morning, brother. Thank you for having me on. This is what a this is one of a lifetime thing. I'm gonna give it to you all I got. I'm gonna keep it real. Offense, defense. First, I want to shout out to some of my mentors. Mr. Stokes, Mr. Murphy, Brother Kojo, all my mentors when I grew up. Without them, I wouldn't be here. It's all about that poor city DNA. Yes, they call me a legend, but I ain't the only legend. But I got some stories, and my stories got stories. This is what it is. Uh, me back in the days, before we had weeds, before crack, and all that. We're going to do it like that. Well, you know, life is a revolve, and it's a revolving around. I come from the 60s, so... Anybody can identify with that? Thank God I'm still here, 2023. This is what I do. So uh, with that being said, uh, with this internet sensation, before the internet, my generation would interact. Before Facebook, my generation, we was face to face. So that's where I'm at now. Nah, we're going to do it like that. So you said, it's, it's safe to say. It's, it's safe to say. You're the first viral sensation out of women. Nah, I'm one of them. We're going to do this thing like Poor City DNA because I grew up on some real cool dudes, man. And all that is a part of where I come from, man. I mean, Poor City is a hell of a city. And I love this city. It's north side, south side, east side. That's how we do it. You know, I'm 025, 056, 065, Poor City. So ain't nowhere I can't go. Ain't nothing I can't do. I love it when they call me street doctor. You feel me, though? Yo, so, you know, all I got to say now, with this generation here coming up, I want to speak on that real fast and quick. You know, these kids got opportunity that I didn't have. You know, they can reach out with this internet stuff. And I just want to let every kid and every young person I know that y'all are great, man. Y'all, y'all really are great. You know, you got to be motivated. You can't be sidetracked. It. You can't be peer pressure. You got to be, you know what I'm saying? You got to be straightforward and keep it real. Because life can throw you some challenges. Oh, man, I'm not a diamond by no fact. Oh, I've been there. I've been this and I've been that. But you know what? I'm here. And a lot of my family and peers and the friends and stuff, they're not here. So whatever with with life, you know what I'm saying? You got the blessings. So I'm blessed. Yeah, we blessed to be here, man. Yeah, we blessed to be here. Uh, uh, can you, uh, can you, uh, how did you love a basketball again? Oh, man. First off, it wasn't basketball, it was baseball. I was like the first, I was the only black, I was the best little league baseball player in the state in 1968. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I don't. I got some. I got some. Some, some proof, but I don't need it. I just need God. In uh, 1968, I was the best little league baseball player in this state. Um, I was the only black. It flew me from here. 1968. I never flew on a plane before, and that was the last time I flew on a plane from the jet from the old Wilmington Airport. It flew me to Atlanta, Georgia, to represent North Carolina. And out of North Carolina, out of all the states, I was the only black in those 50 states, and I came in second in the country. I got pictures or whatever, whatnot. I met Hank Aaron, Connor Fulton Stadium. Uh, it was one of my highlights. Before I was a basketball player, I was a great baseball player. I was very athletic. My mom supported me. I had a great mom, blessed mom, one of the beautiful women in the world. 
Um, she was a, a homemaker. She was a, a traffic cop. She went down to state port. She made her own clothes. She was the interior decorator. Shout out to my mom, one of the beautifulest women I've ever seen in my life. But also, back in the days, she supported me. So I got into the best, a little baseball, and I became the best in the state. That was 1968. I ride on the scene playing basketball. I took up karate after that. Me, my homeboys, William Riley, uh, Fat Bad. Uh, back in the days, uh, uh, shit, uh, whatever. But anyway, I went from baseball, basketball, I mean, baseball, Karate to basketball. Basketball was not the thing for me. I could jump from day to night. Um, we have stories about me and Mike. I can get to that. I got stories. I got stories about me and Michael Jordan. One of the best basketball players. One of my best friends. One of the realest person I ever met. You know what I'm saying? In my life. But uh, I met him in 1975, 76. We just got into pop. We played ball. Back in the day, yeah, up in the middle of school, but we played ball in the park. Back in the day, it was UNCW ball players. Everybody's like in the ball, in the park and playing. Me and Mike was some of the youngest ones. We get on the court, we showcase. Sometimes it took us three, three games to get on the court. But I was like 19, 17, Mike was 16. So uh, we go to the barn, do that. I, I realized that Mike had talent. And um, back in the days, you know, women's world, was it is. We used to compete. We used to walk. Move around. It wasn't no, you couldn't go on this side and that side. But yeah, Mike is a great person. I get into that later on. I got many stories about Mike. But, but yeah, I got into the, the uh, basketball in 1978, 79. They have dunk contests at Bargain Hall Christmas tournament. Three on three dunk contests. Uh, I'm saying some of the players Wim, uh, Dave McGee, Spooknik, um, Donnell Evans, Michael Jordan. Of course, you everybody know Mr. Rondo Boney. Uh, one of the best, best athletes I ever met. Uh, I'm not the only legend. I'm one of the legends. It took me a time. They call me legend, legend, legend. But it is, but it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, some hell of athletes, and we competed back then. But me and Mike made a bond and, uh, as well as Michael uh, Rondo. But they had dunk contests in three on three every year. And I used to come off the street and play because I didn't play high school ball. They wouldn't let me play because back then it was a different era. It was about some racial shit. I went to Hoggett. I played a half a year. I got kicked off the team. But every year they would have a dunk contest. Brian Hall, people would come from all over the state. They compete. Christmas time. Three on three dunk contests. Um, you had Spook Nick. You had, uh, man, uh, Clarence Key, Reggie Gaines. Guys I come up on them. Shady Grady. I even watched guys like Mr. Pat Lewis back in the days. And shout out to uh, Mr. Speedy G's. And I'm going to give him his flowers while he's here. He's still here. Uh, Mr. Mike Jacobs, all the guys that come up on the center, I come up on it and watch them interact with the kids. Shout out to them. It's Jimmy Stevenson, one of my mentor, personal mentor, mentors from the north side. I grew up. I grew up watching Mel Lock Lemon. But getting back to um, the basketball, I competed every year, and I was one of the best in the city. But I would go and show my butt off. And um, I had an opportunity after I beat Mike in 1979 at Bargain Hall dunk contest. Or, you know. Uh, Mike, uh, anybody else was there? I was the man from the free throw line. I ain't lying. Or uh, three sixes is my easiest dunk. I was dunk from day to night. I mean, I would do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I beat niggas who I stepped in the gym. I was that brother, really. One of them. But I beat you. Yeah, offense and defense. You see it? This is not a test. But getting back to uh, getting back to this 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 uh, era right here when I grew up and we was all competitive and you know it wasn't nothing for you to go down the corner or go down the street and you had to worry about nothing. We barely had no other shootings. It wasn't why you had a, a a fight or knife stabbing, but it ain't like it is today. We so uh uh fucked up in the, in in the, well I'm just gonna keep it real. We so peer pressured and under influence of social media and under influence of wanting attention, we forgetting all our, you know, our, our, our morals, our values, our standards, our priorities. We're getting swept up under that, you know. The kids don't even get a chance. I don't see the pox. No kids in the pox. I don't see the kids walking to the store. You know, it, that's one of the greatest experiences I had when I was growing up, to be independent where you can walk and your mama tell you to come back and do this. They don't utilize what they got. All we got now is them other people walking them dogs around, coming in up and down. Uh, neighborhoods, gentrification. You all know what it is. You see it every day. Yeah. You know, they're friendly when they come there. Then they set up barriers. And they say, you know, they call the people's on you. You know, this is my city. 
I grew up here. I'm a DNA. I don't got no problem about nobody coming in here and doing what they're doing. But we as a people, we falling short. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff we had, the kids now ain't never seen. A lot of stuff we had that I know about is gone. So I can imagine the stuff they see right now, before they know it, it'll be gone by the time they get my age, if they're lucky. You know. It really ain't too much. I'm just putting you first. Yeah, I know, man. They are. They're not being, they're not being, uh, I gotta remember the center used to, the center yeah. used to take care of us. Like, yeah. now you can, shout out, you Mr. can Murphy. barely go to the center. Like, shout out, yeah. I shout go out. to the center of open gym and they turned me around. Like, well, they don't even have open gym. Let me hit you up on this, Mr. brother. Uh, last conversation, the last two conversations I had, Mr. Murphy, uh, before he passed, and he was always saying, always he called me, lying. Man, they want this this city. They get this they get this 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 HP Center, it'd be the mecca of the city. He said they tried empty pop. He said once they get this city, they gonna turn it around. And Mr. Murphy, you was right. I had a guy that tell me 30 years ago, he said it won't be long before you see all the uh they used to say Pippin Castle was downtown. Now downtown is past the liquor store, so they're zoning this out. The 17th, they, they said 17th. It's, it's downtown now. It used to be third, fifth, you know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King, Parade downtown. Y'all know the history. We had uh, the Turkey Bowl. We had the, the skating on the street on 6th Street. We know everything was live. Everybody, we didn't have most of the stuff where they took from them in Wilmington was first originated because it was a black city, but we had a lot going for ourselves. Back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'm not going to blame it on crack. Everybody got opportunity choice. You know, the devil, he's going to get you one way or not if you're curious. But it ain't my fight. I learned that a long time ago. And it, 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 to the spiritual fight. It, one side of you, you know, the other side of love you, and one side of get rid of you. But, yeah, getting back to Mike. Yeah, Mike is one of the best persons I ever met. I was locked up in a penitentiary. I beat Mike in 79. I had a chance to go play. I had a chance to go win Salem State. I had 17 scholarships. It was me, Daniel Evans, Michael Jordan, I think Dave McGee, or I don't know what it was, three on three. I'm in lad don't contact. But I know I Sam Mars, Daniel Evans, and myself, we won the three on three. 1979, Brockman Hall. We beat Jordan. I think Sputnik. I won't say Dave McGee. But whatever, if I'm wrong, correct me. I know the Martin Twins, Judge, the deals from UNC Bellevue. There was a big thing down here back in the days. And me and Mike found him a bond. So I went to prison. Mike went to the NBA. I'm three years older than Mike. You know what I'm saying? Mike went to prison. I went to NBA. Mike's second year in NBA, he broke his foot. I was in prison. I was in Hillsboro. And I was doing my thing in prison. Back then, we used to travel around and count in the county in prison, play softball, basketball, baseball. And um, I was real talented. So wherever I went, I competed. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was that brother. And I knew I was special because I had a talent. You know what I'm saying? From karate, baseball, basketball, even right now to the day, you know what I'm saying? I know God's, you know, I, I respect God because I know he gave me blessings. But anyway, we played ball and um, we formed a bond. So when Mike went to NBA, broke his foot the second year, I had to be in prison in Hillsborough. I was doing the same thing he was doing. Me, Monkey Ross, Kenny Allen. They used to travel to Burgard Prison. He used to travel to Clinton. Crest, Crestwell, all over the state playing ball. That was a big thing back in the days. So Mike was beat Georgetown, hit the shot. I was at Burgard in the hole. I didn't ever see that shot for about a year later. But while I was in prison, they recruited me to Hillsboro. I was down at the Caledonia Prison Farm. Everybody knew I could play. Everybody was talking about I should have been in NBA and all that shit there. But they recruited me to Hillsboro. Mike had to be in Carolina, so when I got to Hillsboro, I was at work release camp. I went to work release. And that's seafood in Durham. All the colleges that come to play Durham, Duke, and Carolina would come to my restaurant where I worked at on work release for two years while I was in prison. All I would do is go to prison for everything in the morning, go to work, come back and play basketball. And I got noticed because we was winning state championship, city championship, and federal championship. That's where all the prison where I was at. But Mike broke his foot. Everybody to be kidding me on the camp. Oh, you don't know Mike. You don't know this. But my coach was a sports analyst. His name was Brick Edison. Sports analyst for uh, North Carolina. He recruited uh, Brad Doherty, James Worthy to Carolina. But he, this is one of his little pet things where he was 
coaching us in prison. So we just travel around. We got a lot of sports. They had me on TV for about like three nights. He was a man who beat Michael Jordan sports. Sports beat. W R A L W T B D Darren. They had me on TV for about three, four days. You know, they had highlights of film. Back in the in, in penitentiary back in the days, you couldn't even dunk. I mean the rims were like eleven feet tall down the butler. They had pictures. I wish I can get it on me with my arm in the rim. Oh man, I was a beast. Yeah, I was 17 years tall off of one on one. I played Allery, Johnny Dawkins, Reggie Miller, Pooh Richardson, Pops and Wolf. I mean, I did it. When Mike broke his foot, 17 years before he lost a one and one. I played against Mike. When me and Mike, I used to go over to Carolina and play ball. Dean Smith and my coach hooked it up so I can go. Mike broke his foot, 17 and B. I went over there and trained with Mike. The first day I got to the mic, I was real big, man. I was like, man, I'm, hey, man. Hey, I used to curl 225 pounds, man. I used to do 120 push-ups. I was a fucking beast. I could jump from day to night. Three six is my easiest dunk. I'm going to give it to you real. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway. So that was easy. Yeah, that was the easiest dunk. 360. Yeah, I, I trained, bro. I practiced. I was that nigga. I was that nigga, man. But anyway. I mean, I got so many fights and stuff in prison and stuff. And everybody, you know, I'm not only a street legend, bro. You, you can check my shit, man. You know. This is what it is. But anyway, not not bragging no both, not being considered. It is what it is. But listen, me, me and Mike, we phoned the bond. So when I got to Carolina the first day I went there, he was out there playing ball. And I walked in the gym. And um, Mike said, God damn. You know, come on. Because I had sweatpants on. I didn't know nothing about warming up. I'm straight up muscles. I'm athletic. I'm playing. We got there and play. I, I got my ass kicked by Mike the first time. I think Mike went two or three more games. I had to sit. It was my up. And I think. Uh, Popson, or I think it was Popson, walked in the gym, tried to take my up. Uh, Mike stopped the game. You know, let's say that's my homeboy. It's up next. So we went out there and we played. Well, I ball, that's my first day, but I oh, Mike trained for three weeks in Booker Swift, but I went in and played every day. Coming down, throwing the ball off the backboard, Mike Duncan, we out there tripping fine. Brad Dog, I'm taking the ball out of Brad hand, slamming in the air. I had a one step further for jump. You know what I'm saying? So I was, you know, really, really after that. And I was strong, man. First thing I did, walk to the bread door that I need the bread in the, need the, bread in the side. He said, man, what you doing? I'm warming up. I said, I am too. That's what I do. Yeah, but uh, I had some lifetime experience, but all this, to make it a long time story, Mike used to ask me all the time, man, you need anything, you need anything. I had about two more years to go in prison, and I knew I was going to be up there a while. I was saying, no, I'm, like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. But we, after we play ball, you'd be up in the sand, signing programs and stuff. Mind you, this is second year in the NBA now. And uh, we'd be sitting up to me and him, Brad, daughter, and he'd be talking shit. You know, Mike talk shit. He's straight for a city. Yo, Brad, you need to get your game together, man. You ain't shit. And he's talking shit. That's how Mike do. Oh, I'm telling you, the real Mike in Port City, bro. Yeah, but anyway. in, the, in the last dance and all the Port City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But before the last dance, I seen the real Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike is a cool dude, man. He's great. He's a woman, man. Believe yeah. me. They can say what they want to say. I mean, ask no man to do for you what you can do for yourself. Mike a good brother. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be in the position he is. People don't look at that. God and God, you know what I'm saying? God put him there, so he got to be a good brother. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, I trained for Mike. Mike eventually uh, got his foot together, and I went back. And um, I got out about a year later. I maxed out. I stayed in Durham two, two days before I even came to Wilmington. It let me go early up there in Durham. But anyway, Mike had sent my coach. I had so much stuff Mike gave me. I had his personal shoes. I had a... Uh, uh, Airbag, when he flew all around the world, the Concord, the old Concord plane, he had all the tags on it, he gave it to me personalized. And I came here and um, I was supposed to go, he hooked me up, Dean Smith hooked me up to go to um, play semi pro ball in DC. And I was supposed to go there in Italy to play overseas for seven eighty thousand dollars I got out of prison, I stayed out six months. My mom's passed. And that was it. I went through some shit. I'm not blaming nothing on nothing. I started smoking crack and all that and the devil don't play. So I did that and got through that. But it's been 15 years, knock on wood. And that's behind me. But I went through a little period, but I wouldn't trade nothing for nothing in the world. Only thing I got on mic right now today, I'm three years older. Than them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep that mic. You catch me? You're a bad man. So that's why we're doing it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And, um, I appreciate this, this this shout out, man. I got a lot of other stories. There's a lot of stuff running in my mind, man. I can go back. I know everybody in the city just about from the mayor Sappho. We grew up together, went to school together. He got more stories than I got. He can tell me I just kick his ass. We born in the hospital the same day. I know I know everybody in the city, man. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I love my people. I get my shout outs every day. I get my flowers every day. It ain't nothing. 
You know what I'm saying? People tell me stuff I can't remember. I'm also a street person. And I got that street side. I got the real side. And I love my kids. I had my street kids stuff going on to the pandemic game. I used to interact with the kids. You know what I'm saying? Free. I don't like people charging kids. That ain't my stuff. I grew up on that side. So when somebody try to charge a kid or any kid, I'm all not that way because a lot of kids didn't have it. A lot of kids don't have it. Yeah, I don't I do not do that. My son playing you right now. I tell him right now, I don't want him to play. He's a beast. I'm not going there. I just don't want him to play because, you know what I'm saying, all he got to do is finish school. God going to handle the rest. But as but, but far as that, it's a lot of energy. Watch your, somebody play. Man, I grew up on them. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Stokes. Uh, Jimmy Stevenson, Reggie Gaines. I grew up some of the best teachers and mentors, and it didn't cost me a fucking dime. You know what I'm saying? I got discipline. I got chest eyes. I got the old school. I got some character. I got some, you know what I'm saying? It, I don't understand it. You know, I know people need stuff, but we going to do it. Do it. You get your, your blessings through giving. But I'm about to get back on my own. Um, my own kids stuff and I'm about to do a double judge staying up to the wash house where I work at. Shout out to the wash house 15 and Dawson. That's my spot. I'm about to do a double dust. Mom and daughter double dust and I'm about to do a three point for the kids. Bet they're in the parking lot so I'll be hollering at y'all on that. You know, I know everybody want to holler and leave support but we're support city. We're about to get back on it. Right there on 15th and Dawson. We're about to do that. I'm about to holler at and let these people know and these kids know who this city is from Metal Rock Lemon, where they come back from, and all the other people that I know that's got a lot doing this. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they'll say, but they won't do. You can tell most of the people that I speak to on a daily basis, they don't even speak. Do you got? Do you give me? What you got? What you doing? I recognize the one say, hey, how you doing, Mr. Street? I recognize that's a beautiful thing from the old school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, but I appreciate this time in Harlem, man. We can do this many times. Um, um, our women, oh uh, man, I, I love our women. I love our kids. Uh, a lot of brothers out here, y'all ain't doing what y'all supposed to do, man. I mean, I ain't talking about the young. I ain't talking about the old. I say brothers. That's a whole general generalization. A lot of people want props, and a lot of people want that, but a lot of people selfish doing these days and times. It's gonna be a hot summer next month. This month right here. It's going to be a rough winter. So, like I tell my son, you got to prepare. You know it's coming, so you got to save something up in the book. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody, ain't no woman want no dumb man. Ain't no man want no dumb woman. Y'all got to get something on your head. You know what I'm saying? And um, let your kids, man, let your kids know how great they are. Inspire them. Because when you go and you ain't got nothing, that's what's going to be there for you. You come in this world as a baby, if you're lucky to get old, you leave as a baby. You need a good support team. You will need somebody there for you, somebody real. And our culture, we don't do that. We want to own the races that don't get behind our kids. The Chinese, the Italians, the whites, they get behind the kids, they see the kids at early, they push them. We think it's just a fad or fade. Oh, he did that, 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 that. You got to push them and let them kids know how great they are, man. That's what it's about. Psalms 127. Check that out. If you want to do something. But yeah, man, it's been great. And um, I'm going to um, keep it going. Um, this is one of the reaching out to a lot of people because I come in contact with a lot of people all day and every day but reaching out to a lot of people on this internet hope y'all get something out of this and um yeah the story is still there I got a lot of stories man I mean hey back in the day before they had crack that's where I was at you know what I'm saying I got outside I got it I got it I remember you telling me about uh I remember you telling me about uh, you uh, you you being that dude you you was uh working you you was working out at Duke and you ended up getting into it with Coach K kicked me out. Of, yeah, and he kicked you out. Yeah, Coach K. I went up to Duke. I went up to uh, I didn't know Coach K. I know Dean Smith in, in 80, 85 and eighty six. But I came back to Wilmington. I got in some trouble down there. So nineteen ninety, I went back up there on the run. And um, you can't just walk on that campus and play ball. You know what I'm saying? So. I went to shoot some ball, but I was getting high and stuff down here in Wilmington. I went up there because I was trying to do some charges, but and I knew how to get on the campus and stuff. And when I went there, I had the security guard to stop me and say, man, what you doing? And I said, well, man, you know, I'm a street guard, though. You know, Coach K know me. They know um, just yeah, me, Yeah, 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 that's that was my name. But they, they did a, a video on me 
all of Wilmington, WIL sports beat. Here's the man who beat Michael Jordan. I wish I can get it, man. But I got to go. It's got to go into the podcast to get it, man. But listen, WIL or WTBD called Sports Beat, 1985, 86. It was in Butler. Federal Penitentiary. They did a video on me and they had it showed it for three days, three weekends. And everybody knew who I was because Mike was doing this thing. And the first thing they said when they did the video, here's a man who beat Michael Jordan. Da, 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 da. But I was wearing out team uniforms, but I had um, sweatpants Mike gave me on Carolina Blue. But anyway, yeah, but um, I went to Carolina to play some ball. I was up there on a run in Durham, so I went on camp to shoot some ball. And the security guard stopped me. And I told him I know Coach K, and they called Coach K. He came down and seen me. He said, oh, yeah, I know you. I remember you, man. He said, what you doing? He said, man, you look good. I was, I was man, I didn't look good. I was. He didn't see me in a while, but when he seen me last time, he said, yeah, man, you can play ball. He said, he said, just don't get in no trouble. Stay with us. So, you know, I went in there, played ball, stopped playing ball and stuff. And they had the girls over there, the volleyball girls over there practicing. Girls from Jamaica, you know, people in Duke, Durham, they're from all around the world. You know, so I'm over there looking at them. They're on the half court or on the other side of the court. So looking at us, I see an old tall girl about six two three. She give me the eye. She, I got to holler at her. I went over there and at her. As soon as I went to talk to her before I get up on her, Coach Case stuck his head in the door. And Pete, he said, man, um, he came and called me. He said, man, look, you can play ball, but just don't don't mess with none of the girls and the you know, students and stuff. I said, okay, Coach. So I went and played ball about two hours, two hours and a half. Give me a leave. Give me a leave, nephew. Um, this was, I don't know, but all the alumni used to be over there. Johnny Dawkins, Amaker, they used to be in the gym playing. Just playing pickup ball, you know, but you couldn't just walk in. There. So they was over there, you know, all them guys. And they would cross with Pops and Wolf, them would go over there. These all alumni, the guys just playing Duke, and guys was on the school of athletes on the team. So I go in them, you know. So after Coach tell me don't talk to a girl, I don't talk to a girl for about two hours, but I'm getting ready to leave, you know. And she was over there looking at me. And I'm there. She's sweating. I'm looking at her. I'm going on. Oh, I'm looking at her. God, damn, I quit smoking crack to get this motherfucker. Yeah, he just don't know. So fuck around. I said, let me get this number. I walked over there to get the number. And so I got this number. I looked at it. Go, go, kid. Look through the goddamn door. I said, damn. He ain't say nothing to him. He just went back in. And before I can get off the court, man, the scared of God. They came, man, and told me, man, they escorted my ass off the court and told me I can't come back on there. <laughs> Go get him, put the damn police on me, but yeah, that's one of the stories, man. Yeah, but I know him, and I know a lot of guys, man. Rest in peace, Mr. Reggie on um, Big House Games. Went to State, he recruited me to play ball tonight. I beat Michael Jordan, he was there. I had 17 scholarships there, man. There was a lot of people there. There was beat thousands of people there. People just come from all over North Carolina, Christmas tournaments, when they had them games, them tournaments and stuff. And, and back in the days when Mercury them had a center open, the softball, they used to come from Fayetteville and night games. They played baseball in the day and basketball at night in the gym. And we said, we did this for about 10, 12 years. Around, basically around the same time they had Turkey Bowl, Wilmington with Fron. I mean, it wasn't nothing. Castle Street moment. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was everybody. There wasn't really a lot of shooting. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing, man. And this lasted all up to just about the 90s, 2000. It started changing. It started changing. And, and I wouldn't even say because of the drugs. You know, because everybody in Wilmington ain't got no excuse. But everybody in Wilmington know everybody. This is one of the only cities in North Carolina, everybody local. Uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, Durham. They, they got a lot of colleges. They got a lot of people coming from out of state, like Jacksonville, the military. Wilmington is one of the only cities that everybody's really local. There's nothing down here but USC Double Bay. It's high in these city parts. Everybody is women Tony. You go to Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, they migrate. They come from everywhere, especially Durham. We got people all over Raleigh. But women's in the only one, and we come in here. It's basically our city. Everybody who's here, who's here, who's born here, is basically our city. The people that come from out the city, they come in here and change stuff, especially the police officers. Most of them police officers are not from here. That's why you don't see them, don't know them. You know, the mindset. Sappho Good, Ben Davis, he's doing his job. Uh, Mr. Faison. Judges, they do their job. I don't knock that because the only way not to deal with them is don't go down there if you want to beat that shit. But once you get involved into that system, it's a different game. You know what I'm saying? So as far as the city, man, it's a lot of stuff we can be doing. You got a lot of people around here that's doing it in their own way. And I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with that because I like, you know, when I want to do it, I want to do it. I've been doing stuff for years. Up to recently, the pandemic come, I stopped. But I'm getting back on that. And um, shout out to you. Brother, for letting me, um, you know, give you some insight and my, tell my story. And um, 
if, if something I can look back on me and my kids can look back on, man, that's what it's about. Because I got a lot of stories, man. My mind is running. And we will be back, Port City. We will be back surrounding County. But this is the one and the only legend, Jerry Street Doctor. I love it when they call me Street Doctor. Yes, sir. Oh, we're going to do something, man. Um, I got to go back because this is my first one. You know what I'm saying? I'm fresh out of the water on this internet. So. Yeah, man. Yeah. When yeah. we wrap this up, it's yeah. yeah. But it is what it is, man. I just want to let everybody know that uh, life, you know, what it is, and health is more important than anything. Because if you keep your health, you can go through the good times and the bad times. Yeah. I don't care nothing about no money, no cars, or none of that. I care about my kids. But if you keep that health, you can go through the good times and the bad times. You know what I'm saying? You can have a whole lot of material stuff and have, be sick and can't enjoy it. I really be healthy and I have nothing to be able to, go on to have something or make something but the health is more important man you want to get one body and one life you know what I'm saying yes you got another question for me bro uh, what, what would you tell uh, what advice you got uh, when you're these inspiring Athlete. Oh man, yeah, I'm glad you say that, bro. Man, I got my son down here, man. He's gonna be going to school down here, 15 year beats. I ain't going there, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. But as far as the athletes, man, you know, y'all at a time, I come up in a time where people gave me, my peers was my prop, my peers were internet. I didn't have to, I didn't have to go around bragging. I never brag, I never had to, you know. I put my work in before I showed it and everybody knew I completed. You, if you get your peers, if you get your peers to vouch for you, that's more important than anybody that you hang with. But I want to inspire these athletes, man. Y'all really, you know, a lot of these athletes, they get satisfied content. There's different levels to sports. There's different levels. Once you get comfortable and you, you got the progress, you, you can't be comfortable and think you you got it all. You know it all. You got to keep going. The stuff you can't do good, that's what you got to work on. All the stuff you're doing good, you don't need to even waste your time on it. But you got to train. I didn't say practice. I didn't say play. Train. Train is the key. Train is like a boss. Karate. Bruce Lee. You train. That's how you know what you know to do. You go out there and play? Nah. You go out there and practice? Nah. Every time I play a ball going up, I always play like I was checking myself. I always imagine myself checking me. So I didn't go around this shoot. I didn't go around this practice. My my thing was game speed. Yeah, I practiced. I, I did wind sprints. I did uh I mean I did uh suicide by myself. I didn't hear a question at the time I was going up there at eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night. My mom had to call me and I'd be out there dribbling the ball, blindfolded, so listen to the ball, trying to try to find it, but I never made nothing easy. I always train and that's the key. You gotta be committed. You know, uh you got to trust the process. I mean, if you're satisfied, content, that's what you're going to be a satisfied, content player. If you want to be great, you got to train. Focus. And the stuff, if you train, the stuff you do in the game will come easy. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of my, my, my things about any kind of sports you got to train. And you got to stay in shape. You can't lack consistency. You got to stay in shape. Man, I can remember, man, I used to, I used to get down, man, um, I went out there before we played ball. I run about 10 suicides and uh, get all hot and leather. And then before I know it, when the game was over, I didn't hit all the points and dunk all the stuff. I was just a, a motivated person. I never just settled because I always know that I could do something if I put my mind to it. That's what you got to let these kids know. But these athletes out today, man, and it's a lot of guys, man. You got to be a two-way player, too. That's what I'm saying. Offense and defense. I ain't trying to hear all that shooting. Shoot, bro. Somebody got to get you the ball. That man don't get no credit. If you can shoot, that's cool. If you can shoot. When that shoot, that pistol go. It's all. Look, you, you ain't no good. Look, man, listen, man. I tell my son. I tell my son. If you play two ways, you'll play the whole game. When they come and look at somebody else, let him leave talking about you. You two way player, man. You can't be out there. Give me the ball, give me the ball, and, and, and rebound and, uh, and, and get mad because somebody didn't get the ball. You got to play both ends. Your man got to feel you when you got the ball and when you don't have the ball. That's respect, man. I'm telling you, man. You, you, I, I, if they had the internet, the time I played, that motherfucker be broke, bro. I'm telling you, I used to do some shit. 
what, 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 you, what, what you think the problem with Zion, man? Oh, Zion, man. I, think, I, I really think you just need to, you need to. Let me tell you about him. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about him. Let me tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, no, let me tell you about him. Hamstrings and stuff like that. Let me tell you about him and a lot of other players. Where they mess up at, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm hard impressed. I'm not a hater. You can say I'm a hater or whatever it is. I, LeBron, I ain't seen nothing. I don't care what nobody say. I'm an athlete. I'm a ball player. Athlete he built, but, but get back to Zion. When Zion came into the league, so I, I know basketball. I told everybody, I said, you know what? Zion good. He's going to be like Vince Carter and Dominic. But he's not going to be nowhere near better than Charles Bartley. Oh, no, he is. No, I said, man, you crazy. I said, man, you know who Charles Bartley No, he's not going to be better than Charles Bartley. I said, how are you going to do that? Because Charles Bartley ain't the lead in scoring and rebounding. Do you understand? I'm six four six five. Zion ain't doing none of that. I don't care about no dunk in the chunk. He already in the prone. He's big, athletic. He just oh, okay. I give him a little bit, but I ain't want. If he was playing today in top form, he still wouldn't be better than Charles Bartley. That's the way I I, I, I put his game up against. No, LeBron. It's a different game. It's a different game, but still, he's all when he got the ball. You don't feel him when he ain't got the ball. You know what I'm saying? Bartley, you both. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The whole game complete. You know what I'm saying? So I know the game and I know I'm not going to, you know, you brought Zion up. It's a lot of athletes out there. I'm, you know, Jokers, he's a, 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 not only that, he's not easy to be moved. He don't play on emotions. See, he's a, a Tim Duncan mode. You know what I'm saying? A dirt mode. You know what I'm saying? He, he never, he never really get into it, but he, Working on the skill because he do it in practice and training. He trained for that. He did that. What they can't bring nothing to him. But he already trained for. See, and he already got the heart and the battle work. So once you train, he trained. He trained. You know, he come from a, his family. Come from a uh, a fearless family. His daddy was a police officer. I think he was known for knocking out twelve motherfuckers in a bar and dragging them all out. But it's in his heart. Like my son, he got that dog in him. You ain't gonna beat my son. You ain't gonna beat him. I don't care if you're six and nine saying he ain't up a five level five. You're not gonna beat him. You're not gonna be take two two ways, two two ways. He can shoot. I'm not worrying about it. He's gonna check you, bro. He's gonna be on you. He's gonna wear you down with like a Rodman, like a Barkley, like a Gary Payton, like a Muzzy Bowles. That's why I teach my boy to play. And that's the way everybody should play the game. Yeah, you cannot sleep on one end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but these kids here, man, they got a lot of opportunities, but they don't take, you know, much to get there. They don't take much to lose it. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I see guys, man, even when I was playing, like I say, I went years before I lost in one on one. And I knew you wasn't gonna beat me. I could I ain't no way in the hell. But what I was gonna do, my thing was to block your shot first. My my thing was to steal the ball. So was Rondo right there with Joe? Like, Rondo was Rondo was right there with Jordan at three years old. Rondo is one of the best ball players I've seen in my life. Um, I've been around a lot, but he's a best one of the best athletes also. You know, I give him his props. You know, Ronjo was a beast. We grew up, me and Ronjo grew up in the same we grew up as kids together. I stayed around seven, eight, nine years old, oh, we all hung up together and grew up. We used to compete. Yeah. Ronjo a beast. Yeah. It's a lot more. You know, I grew up with a lot more. Reggie Gaines was one of the best ball players I've ever seen out of this city. Probably even better than George. Reggie Gaines, big cat. Google him up. One Salem State. Reggie Gaines. Um uh, he led uh back college in scoring three, four years, went to Win Salem State. He went over to the Italy. He led lead over there scoring for about seven years. I think he's in Greensboro he's from out of Hero Crest. Reggie Gaines, six seven, went to Hargett. Played like uh shit. Oh, man, he had a game so fluently, man. That's what Jordan got his move for. We used to watch him, man. Oh, uh, damn. We played like uh, Garnett a little bit. I can give him Garnett. He played like, uh, you just got to Google him. Uh, Reggie Gaines, a homeboy. He's one of the best ball players. Not studied, you know, like Lemon. I can throw that hook right now from Castle Street to the north side. My best shot when I want to look at the goal. I mean, I practiced and did it all my life. Yeah, I can, I can shoot that ball. Still can. I don't take a whole lot of shots. I just do that. God give it and God take it away. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's a lot I can teach kids, man. I wish I had a, a audience. I wish I could just go out and give them what I got. And I wouldn't charge nobody. But what I got, I need to give it to somebody because I got some shit. Them coaches, them 
stuff. I don't know nobody for no, teaching no. and getting a, a bag behind it, this stuff. Yeah. You know, but some of that stuff is God giving. You can't put a price on God's gift. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I got it, man. I like to get these kids. I had a four year old, five year old. I like to get the ones that some of them got the attention span. You got to let them kids know how great they are. And I, I got something now, as old as you, that I dealt with when they was young. And they come up to me every day and they let me know. And, you know, getting back, sometimes I forget. But it's real, man. It's a lot of history in this city, man. And I love my people. But what I want us to do is know how great we are. Once you know how great we are, they stop finding out how great we are, then we become greater. Yeah, that's what it is. Word, uh, yeah. Offense, defense. Offense, defense. Offense, defense. You think, you think, uh, you think the boys gonna come back and repeat this? It's hard, man. They can, but you know, I don't get up into too much of that basketball season stuff. Early in, I don't really get into it to after All Star break. That's when they start making trades. The teams they put together now, it ain't nothing because most of the teams, the guys gonna realize they get hurt. Knowing you play eighty two games, you have nagging injuries. A lot of guys have broke fingers and wrists be broke, and they, you know they get that playoff is serious. That's after eighty two games, so you got to be in top, 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 top shape. So what they doing right now, like Murray and them guys, they putting in work right now. Even though they just got off the winning season, they got to do it in the off season. Murray you know was fresh though. Remember he set up too. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why they had a good chance. But also he was focused. I'm a fucking play. I'm sorry. He, he he had good legs because he you know injured, but he was focused. And then Jokers. Do his thing, and and I like MB. That's my team, seven six. I like MB. Yeah, uh, Doc. He got what he was supposed to get. He he had three years up there. He had every run. So it is what it is. It's time for a change. You know what I'm saying? But MB is a good good ball player. Tatum, it's all right. But Tatum, to me, to me, I'm I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. I like, Brown, oh, I like Brown too, but Tatum remind me of Reggie Miller a little bit. You know, the same type game, but Reggie Miller was a better score and a, a more on on end of the game score. You can see Tatum starting to in the third fourth quarter. You can see him starting to have doubts and stuff. You know, he had that killer killer in him. He get it when he's going to the flow. But Brown, he a better ball player to me because all around ball player. But I don't. Yeah, but I don't know. I think he was in the right place for all that money, though, because that's a lot of money, but it is what it is. Yeah, right place. Uh, It'll be somebody that's coming. Yeah. Somebody go they didn't want to break it up, and they got the money. They didn't want to bring some more keys. They got guys down in G League, man, overseas, waiting to get the opportunity. Like my, shout out to my own boy, uh, uh, BB. Yeah, BB. He overseas, eh? Yeah, shout out to my own boy, man. You know, shout out to him. And he's another good kid. And shout out to my homeboy, Malik Jacobs, for doing his thing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, boy. Offense, defense. You know, you know, we had this talk when you were seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. And I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, keep it going. Yeah, shout out, man. And my own girl down to Kfield Tech is coaching. I forgot her name. I from Houston Mo. Little girl I used to have on the court. I forgot her name. She's assistant coach down there. Shout out to her. I see. I see you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, something I think. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And shout out, Nana. You know, Nana, you might not know me, but me and your daddy grew up together. I mean, when he was a little girl, I come to say your game, but me and your daddy, he know me. He know my story. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. I'm from Hillcrest. That's where they from. Yeah. Yeah, the boys said produce, yeah. produce some. Oh, they got talent, man. I can go back, man. I can go back, man, from Turkey Bowl days to a cat. Shout out my homeboy, Miss Pat Lewis, just the past. I watched them grow up. Williston, one of the greatest boss, basketball players come out of Wilmington. Uh, shout out to, uh, man, so many guys, man, that I grew up under and I recognize. Uh, man, I've seen some, seen some stuff in this city, man. Still seeing it. But what I'm saying is, it's not being. Uh, it, 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 the, the platform is getting smaller. Everybody used to showcase their stuff and know, but the platform, you, you got the little AAU, you can't go to the center, nobody's doing nothing. The platform is getting smaller. You know, the HP Center, it ain't, you don't see nothing up there no more. They they trying, do the yeah, yeah, they, 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 don't, yeah, they do stuff, man. And that's a community center. And they're going to build another center. And then they're going to have these other coaches. These other people coming from out of the city, 
and come in here and start coaching these kids around here. They're going to be bringing kids from other places. Well, we got coaches and kids right here in this city. This is our city. As soon as they get this new place over here, Martin Luther King's, they're going to build this place over here. You know, Adam's people come down. I did see the other uh, plans. Yeah. And another thing, they don't give us Mr. Murphy his props. They don't give us. They're going from Martin Luther King Center to the MLK Center. Instead of the William H.E. Murphy, H. E. Murphy yeah. complex. Murphy. Anytime on the news, when the Martin Luther King Center, Mr. Murphy, that's Mr. Murphy, William E. Complex, third complex. I mean, they do what they want to do, but they should have a big pad up there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody come through that door. I know they got a picture of me in there. Everybody come through that door should know the history. You have, they, it, it shouldn't be. The MLK no more. It should be the William E. Third Murphy Complex. And that kind of got me. That, that, that hits me. You know, because we put work, you know what I'm saying? Without him, it would be a lot of people. And you didn't, you, you, ain't, you ain't from the court if Murphy ain't smack you with that whistle. If Murphy ain't smack whip you with that whistle, uh, the whistle string, man. Man, you know how many kids and my generation, when people would say, when your mama, when you told your mama I was going to the center, they didn't have to worry about you. Yo. They knew you was all right. They had no cell phone. You go to the center, they knew you was good. Murphy was going to take care of you. If anything got out of place, your mama's going to hear about it. It ain't none of that no more. These kids, I ain't going to say they disrespectful. They don't got nobody to look up to to make them see that they're special. You know, I don't really care nothing about what they say is what they do. That matters more. You got these old people around here, kids around here, walk right by them, spurting, cursing, pants down. I see a lot. They don't, you know, I, it's a different era. But, you know, you got, you got, it's so messed up, man. And um, I just want, you know, these, these people taking over our city. Y'all sitting around looking, we ain't picking up no houses, we ain't buying up the business, the area getting the business, white people buying all the business, but we claiming all the hoods. That's how it is. Black people, and we don't want nothing. And the first thing we want to do is kill a motherfucker, fight a motherfucker, beat a motherfucker up, but ain't got no bond money. And as soon as you get down there, you know what comes after that. They start telling everything from the time they're born. You know what I'm saying? So that's some other shit, but that's the reality of other shit. But our city is a beautiful city, man. It's right here. It's ours, but we're letting it gradually. You know, they're just slipping away from us. I mean, our people are great. We can look good, dress good, sing good, dance good. But God damn it, we got to do good. We got to do good. We got to do good by ourselves. We got to do that, poor city. So that's what it is. And thank you, bud, for having me on this show. I got to go back to work. Watch out. You're keeping Dawson. That's what we do. I appreciate your street. Feel me, though? Offense, defense. You are with the Filmino Podcast. Signing off. Peace. Signing off. Well, I might have talked too damn much now. Filmino, I mean real though. Filmino, all eyes on me, still can't see me though. Filmino, I mean real though. Still talking about what they don't need.